Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast has evolved over the five plus years since it first launched. From now on, I'm going to be talking about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. And also mindset, of course, but mindset of all kinds, not just business mindset. I think. Things are changing for me, as you may have noticed if you've been following me online or listening to this podcast, so anything goes here. I hope you stay along for the ride. Thank you so much for joining us today, and now let's get into this week's episode. Hello and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast, episode 314. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another solo episode. Today, I'm going to talk about a topic very similar to last week's topic. It's kind of a deeper dive into what I was talking about last week in the self-care episode. So today I'm talking about self-love. I'm going to be talking about what is self-love? Why do you need it? Why might you want it? How to figure out what it looks like for you? Why self-care is linked to self-love? How to work on your self-love? and like practical stuff on how to do this, because I feel like this is a very kind of nebulous topic. I was doing research as always before I hit record on this. I always kind of have an idea of what I want to talk about, make some bullet points, and then I Google the topic and see what other people are saying about this and see what I think about that, like whether I agree with what people are saying, whether I have different perspectives, And I kind of put that all together. It really helps me to kind of get into the topic by seeing what other people are saying about that. So when I was doing my research for this topic, I realized there's so much generic stuff out there on self-love. And a lot of it really, to me, falls under the category of self-care. There was a lot of stuff around take time out for yourself and do some journaling and care for yourself. And it was all really self-care stuff. Yeah, a lot of stuff that I covered last week, which was a good episode, I think. I actually think I need to go through it myself and make my own menu of self-care, which I haven't done yet. I kind of have a random list in my ideas, but I would really like to have something written down. So if you haven't listened to last week's episode, head over there and do so after you listen to this one. So let's start out by talking about why I think this is so important, and what is it? So, self-love. What is it? I was trying to make notes on this topic and what I think this is. I kind of kept going deeper. So I was like, what is self-love? And then I was like, what is unconditional love? And then what is love? So this is going to look different for everyone. It's going to look different for every single individual. But I'm sure you have an idea of what love is, what it means to you. And of course, I Googled that. And God, it's so hard to define. It's kind of like this conglomeration of emotions and feelings. And it's really, really hard to define. So I'm going to uh, be lazy here and start out by asking you to get clear on what love means to you might want to stop this, pause it, think about it. Like, what does love look like for you when you think about other people? So if you think about like friends, family members, partners, what does love look like to you? What does a loving relationship look like to you? And maybe journal on this, like sit down and look at, make a list of all the different ways that you know these people in your life love you. Like, what has your partner done for you, your friend, your family? Like, how do they act? How do they behave? What do they do? How do you know that these people that love you, love you? That can be kind of tricky, but I think that will really help you give you an idea of what a loving relationship looks like to you. Next, what is unconditional love? So you might want to go back and revisit that list add some things to it, highlight the really important things. Putting additional love is basically love without limitations, without conditions, no matter what. It's loving this person, whether it's yourself or someone else, no matter what the person does, 
says whatever. And that's rough. Now that I'm saying this, I can hear myself thinking, that's really, really rough. Because people can do some crazy things sometimes, kind of really out of character and distasteful things. And so maybe think about who in your life you have loved unconditionally. If you're a parent, probably your kids. Maybe your partner, maybe not. But think about what unconditional love looks like for you, like the people in your life that you have loved unconditionally, and what that feels like to you. Like, do your parents love you unconditionally? Think about what that feels like. How have they shown this to you? Your partner, your kids. Go through the people in your lives who you have loved unconditionally and who you think have loved you unconditionally. And write down what that looks like, what it feels like, what it sounds like to you. So now you should have an idea of what love looks like, feels like, sounds like to you, what unconditional love looks like to you. And then apply that to yourself. Like go through your list and think about how those things could apply to you. What that would look like if you were to love yourself unconditionally. That to me is what self-love is. It's loving yourself with no limitations, no conditions, no matter what. But because I think this is such a challenging topic for us, it really helps to look at how you love other people and how other people love you. I think that can be really, really helpful to get a clear picture of what self-love looks like for you. And again, this is going to be different for everyone. You may be familiar with the concept of the, I think it's the five love languages. I'll link to that in the show notes. And again, this is something that applies to couples, applies to your relationships with other people. But I think that it can be really useful to figure out what your love language is. So there are five of them. I'm linking to this in the show notes, but basically they're words of affirmation. So people telling you or expressing verbally that they love you. Acts of service. So doing things. Receiving gifts. That's clear enough. Quality time. So spending quality time with the other person and physical touch. So think about how that can apply to you. Like, are you telling yourself loving things? Now, maybe you're not having like a full conversation with yourself out loud, but what's your mind chatter like? What's your self-talk like? Is it, are you beating yourself up all the time or are you building yourself up? Acts of service. So that would be like self-care stuff, all the stuff that I talked about last week, like how often do you do things for yourself? Self-care. Receiving gifts. Now, I'm not saying you need to go out and buy yourself a bunch of crap, but when was the last time you bought yourself a nice little thing? Quality time. And this could be self-care. This could be just making some time for yourself to do whatever you want to do. When was the last time you Spend some quality time with yourself. A lot of us are running around really stressed and we need that quality time. Physical touch. So there is such a thing as self-massage. I'm not really into it. You might be. But basically, I'm not talking about intimate self-massage. That's also an option. But I'm talking about just like self-massage, like massaging your arms and your shoulders. I'm not into that because I don't find that really relaxing. So physical touch, like what kind of physical touch do you need to give yourself? Maybe it's going to a spa. Maybe it's getting a massage. Maybe it is self-massage. Maybe it's other kinds of self-massage. What kinds of physical touch could you give to yourself to show yourself that you love you? And again, this could be getting a massage from someone else or getting, I don't know, a pedicure, a manicure, a head cranial massage. I don't know. Those are some examples. You're going to have an idea of what works for you. So those are the five love languages. And I think that can also help you take a look at it. And please go to the show notes, click on the link. It's literally just the number five lovelanguages.com. But check that out. There's a quiz on there that's really interesting that can give you a feeling for how you naturally express love because everyone has a preference. But if we're looking at improving our self-care and improving our self-love, it might be a good idea for you to pick one thing from each category and give it a try and see what, how that improves your 
relationship with yourself and your sense of love for yourself. So that is that. So that should help give you an idea of what self-love looks like, feels like, sounds like to you. And I think self-care is really, really linked to self-love because some of the ways that we can show ourselves love is by practicing self-care. And as I say this, I'm aware that these are all kind of, they become like, I don't want to say meaningless buzzwords, but I feel like these phrases are really kind of thrown around a lot, like, oh, you need to practice self-care and you need to love yourself. And that's led to this really kind of superficial information available online. So I'm really going to try to be practical with this and I'm really going to try to bring it home, which is why I think I did a good job with that last week in the self-care episode, because I think it's important to bring this down to really practical stuff and specifically find the practical stuff that you can do to make your own life better and to help you to feel better and to live a better life and love yourself. So self-love is something that's been on my mind for the last couple of weeks because a couple of weeks ago, I had my latest plant spirit healing apprenticeship weekend. And in it, we were told that we have to choose a plant or have a plant come to us to help us work with kind of our biggest topic in life to heal. And we had determined that my biggest topic to work on is self-love. And that's not a surprise. So the plant that I suspected I was going to work with was lavender. And lavender to me is very much tied up with self-care because it's relaxing, calming, soothing. But I wanted to confirm that. So I ended up going to Mayfield Lavender Farm, which is this really gorgeous lavender farm, about a half hour away from where I live. I'm going to link to that in the show notes in case you live in the UK and want to go there. Now is prime time for the lavender. So I went to see the lavender because I wanted to talk to the lavender and ask it and kind of get confirmation that it was indeed the plant that I meant to be working with for self-love. So I think what I'll do is I will just cut to the recording of lavender. So what I did with lavender was I, in the same way that I did for my tree book, I recorded myself channeling lavender. And I think this is really, really interesting. I think it's a really good recording. I'm going to have to edit it a little bit before I pop it in here, but here we go. I am the plant of self-love. I'm the plant of self-love because I'm the plant of self-care. When you think of lavender, you think of sleep, gentle relaxation, kindness to yourself, caring for yourself. Loving yourself, taking the time out of a busy day to give to yourself, to care for yourself, to love for yourself, taking the time out of doing things for other people, helping other people, and instead choosing to help yourself. This is not selfish. This is not being unkind to others. This is being kind to yourself first because you cannot truly be kind to others. You cannot truly help others without helping yourself first. You must always help yourself first so that you can live in a balanced state, a place of peace, a place of centeredness, a place of groundedness, so that you can help others. You cannot be of service to others if you are not of service to yourself first, if you do not care for yourself first. You cannot. And I speak of groundedness. You see, here we are in a line, in many, many lines, grounded, deeply rooted in the earth. My fragrance is not a sweet, light fragrance. It is a deep, earthy fragrance. It is a warm fragrance, a comforting fragrance. A fragrance that helps me help you. This is one of my purposes, to help. To help with self-love, to help with self-care, to help with self-kindness. 
Being kind to yourself, loving yourself, gently, calmly, quietly, caring for yourself with sweetness, with gentleness, with love. I am here to help with self-love, which we know can be difficult. We know it can be tricky. We know it can be difficult for you humans, because you are so often taught that to love yourself is arrogant. To care for yourself too much is selfish. And as I've said, and as I will say again, you must help yourself first. Out helping yourself first, you cannot truly be of service to others. So some of that was a bit difficult for me. I just listened to it again because I did a bit of editing before I came back to this so that I was fresh with the message before I went back to talk to you about it. Yeah, there was this one part where Lavender says, you must always put yourself first. And I think that's really, really uncomfortable for a lot of us. Again, if you've got kids, you've got to keep your kids alive and well. So there are definitely going to be times when you can't put yourself first. And I'm sure that goes the same if you're you know, another kind of carer. However, going back to the oxygen mask analogy, like if we're not alive, if we're not alive and well, it's really hard to help other people. So I hope you found Lavender's message interesting. I'm going to be working with Lavender over the next coming months, so there may be more podcast episodes about this topic. It's definitely something that I'm going to be diving deeper into and really looking forward to it because this is one of the biggest topics in my life. And I think it's one of the things that my soul came here to really, really work on because my self-love has been not great. It's definitely improved over the last decade. But the previous decade, I was in a relationship where my self esteem, self-confidence, everything was completely broken down. So it was like I kind of had to build myself up from negative levels of self-love. So it's been a long, rocky road for me. And self-love, I feel like it's been at the root of a lot of my work that I do. You know, a lot of the mindset stuff, I really think that doing this mindset work is an act of self-love because you are caring for yourself enough to improve the things that you want to improve in your mindset so that you can have the life you want to live. That is self-care. But again, I don't think self-care is the same as self-love. So how do you work on your self-love? Before I talk about this, I think it's worth you pausing this to rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. How much do you think you love yourself? What is the quality of your love for yourself, of your self-love on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being highest, 1 being lowest? How much do you love yourself? Ask yourself that question in whatever way you need to. But honestly, I think it's worth you getting clear right now, honestly, on how much you actually love yourself. Pause this if you need to. So, how to work on your self-love. To me, it's all about self-acceptance. It's all about facing the truths about yourself. It is total and unconditional self-acceptance of your complete package, of the complete package that is you, who you are, where you are in life, where you've been in life. It's about forgiving yourself for past mistakes and past decisions And instead, focusing on the learning. What did you learn from those experiences? Because it's not worth beating yourself up about stuff that you've done in the past if you haven't learned from it, because that was all learning opportunities. So let's delve a little deeper into this. Your complete package. I've done a lot of blog posts on really digging deep and exploring who you are, where you are, where you're going in life. And I think the answers to those two questions are part of what make up what I've called your complete package. So it's who you are, where you are, where you've been in life. Like, what have you done up until now? And so I'm going to link to those blog posts because I think it could be really useful for you to go through those posts and 
really get clear on the answers. I really think that answering the question of who are you is one of the most important questions we can ask for ourselves. And I think that can be an entire life's journey. It can be life's work, getting to know ourselves, getting to know who we are as people and getting to know who we are as a soul, if you believe in the whole multiple incarnations thing, which I do. So I'm going to link, as I said in the show notes, blog posts that can help you get clear on who you are and where you are in life. But also looking at where you've been is really important. So again, like I said, forgiving yourself, looking at how your life's journey has made you who you are today. Because all of our experiences, both positive and negative, good and bad, welcome, unwelcome, form who we are today. They inform who we are today. So I think it's really, really useful to just sit down and journal on this stuff. If you're not into journaling, I don't know, ponder the questions. But I find that really getting the stuff out of my head and onto a piece of paper in a notebook in a file on my computer helps make it real. Otherwise, it's just this jumble of crap in my head. So really get clear on who you are, where you are today in life and where you have been and how those life experiences have made you who you are today. And like I said, this is all about facing the truths about yourself. The good, the bad, the ugly, pull it out of your head and put it onto paper and really get clear on it. The first step of this is getting clear on your package. <laughs> Not sure if this is the right way to explain this, but I think you have an idea of what I mean. And I'm saying package and not baggage. We talk a lot about emotional baggage. We've accumulated from the crap that we've experienced. But I don't, I think baggage is like, that's a good way of looking at it in this case. I think we're talking about the package, which is more of a positive word, because there's nothing good or bad about any of this. This is just who we are, what we've done, where we've been, where we are. And the first step is facing the truth and getting clear about it, getting clarity about this stuff. The next step is total and unconditional self-acceptance. This is who I am. This is where I've been. This is where I am. This is what I've done. Forgiving yourself, as I've said. And just being totally okay with all these things. So maybe you've been struggling to lose weight for the last few years. Accept that. This is where you are. This is where you've been. This is who you are. That's okay. Later, you can make a plan to work on that. Take the actions you need to take to change that. Maybe you're ashamed of how you treated an ex-partner. You made some decisions that you're not happy about. You hurt the person, whatever. Forgive yourself. You can't change that stuff. You can focus instead on the learning and make better decisions in the future. So forgiving yourself is really, really important. And you've really got to kind of dig up all the stuff. All the stuff that you've been afraid of, all the stuff that you're ashamed of, all the stuff that you dislike yourself for. I don't want to say that you hate yourself for, but maybe you feel like you hate yourself. Dig up all that stuff, put it down, get it out in the open, and just accept yourself for it. So how do you do that? This is, I'm still on this journey, so I do not have the definitive answers for you. All I can tell you is what I've done and what's worked for me and what I recommend. Doing the mindset work. So maybe you need to make a list of all the stuff that you don't accept yourself for and then flip that on your head and write down, I completely and utterly forgive myself for doing this thing. I completely and totally forgive myself for making that decision. However you want to word it, find what wording looks for you, good for you. Make those lists. And then do the mindset work you need to do to clear that stuff. So using Psych K, I would just create belief statements saying I completely and totally forgive myself for X, Y, Z. Or using whatever 
technique you use. You can tap it out if you're familiar with tapping. If you don't know what tapping is, Google it. There's a ton of tapping videos there online. You can find all kinds of information. So use whatever technique you are trained in or find a professional to help you to work on accepting these things. I would, as I said, start out by making a list of the stuff that you feel like you need to forgive yourself for, that you need to accept yourself for, and do the work. Just work through the list one by one. Forgiveness, I've talked in the past about, I'm going to totally mispronounce this, Ho'oponopono. It's a Hawaiian forgiveness technique. I will link to that in the show notes and Google that. And again, there will be a link, but Google it if you want to learn more beyond the link that I share and use that to forgive yourself for things that you consider to be mistakes or poor decisions and just keep doing rinse and repeat. Like I said, I'm still working on accepting myself for some of the stuff. I'm still unhappy with some of the decisions that I made in the past. And I find myself focusing more on the shame or the disappointment or being unhappy with myself for those decisions rather than focusing on the learning. So when you find yourself kind of going back to beating yourself up for that crap from the past, flip that on its head, do the mindset work, do the forgiveness work to release that stuff. This is such a huge journey, this road to self-love, this road to self-acceptance. And uh, it's not like you're going to sit down with yourself for a half an hour, an hour, and just get it done. Pay attention to when this stuff crops up. Pay attention to when you see yourself feeling bad about yourself and make a note that you need to work on this stuff to do some more work. So again, how to work on your self-love, it's all about self-acceptance, facing these truths about yourself. It is total and unconditional self-acceptance of the complete package of who you are, where you are in life, where you've been. It's forgiving yourself and focusing instead on the learning. So that to me is kind of the one thing you can do to work on your self-love. It's about accepting yourself. But it's also about working on self-care, working on self-trust, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-love, self-worth, self-talk. And this is all about doing the mindset work. So I've written books on business mindset. I'm going to write books on kind of personal mindset. But the business mindset stuff is still applicable. You just take the stuff that I talked about and apply that to your personal life if you don't have a business. But I've written a lot about Self-trust, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-value, self-worth, self-talk. So get clear on what is the mindset work that you need to do to improve this stuff and do it. This is all about doing the inner work. I'm aware that this is such a big topic. There's so much you can do. And I feel like this is going to be end up being more than one episode, but I feel like this is a good place to start. So, what can you do? Take action today. First of all, I'm going to recap what I've talked about. Look at what love means to you. What does unconditional love mean to you? What does self love mean to you? So, get clear on that by looking at what you would expect or what you experience from a partner, friend, or family member. How you show your partner, friends, family members that you love them, and see how you can apply that to you to a vision of what unconditional love looks like to you. First step. Next step, work on accepting yourself. So facing the truths about yourself. I'm going to repeat this for, I think, a third time. Total and unconditional self-acceptance of the complete package of who you are, where you are in life, and where you've been in life. Forgive yourself. Now, again, this is all going to take time. You're going to have to keep doing this stuff. I've been doing this work for years. And it's getting better. It's not like, oh no, you're going to have to work on this for the rest of your life until you die, or the next 10 years of your life, or the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years. It gets better little by little. It's not like you have to do 30 years of work with yourself and then you'll see the results. You will see the results with each step that you take. You'll see the results with each little session of work that you do with yourself. From the journaling, from the mindset work, you will see results. And little by little, Step by step, you will start to accept yourself more, 
and start to care for yourself more and start to love yourself more. And so the last thing to do is to work on self-care. And if you don't know what that means, or if you don't know what to do, go back to last week's episode, which I will link to in the show notes, and work on that stuff. But as I said, if you Google what is self-love, how to practice self-love, a lot of the stuff that's going to come up is simply practicing self-care. And I think that's a part of it, but I think it goes deeper than that. And I think it's all about unconditional self-acceptance. And... It's no surprise that my heart-centered energy work that I use to work with clients and with my patrons and Patreon is all about self-love, self-acceptance, and self-trust. Those are kind of the big three things. And I think the more you accept yourself and the more you love yourself, the more you'll trust yourself. All this stuff is interlinked. And it's all linked with self-esteem, self-confidence, self-value, self-worth, self-talk. All this stuff is interlinked. So. Work on one area and it will have ripple effects to all the other areas. But I think the deep rooted issue that it all comes down to is self love. And I hope this episode has helped you get clear on what self love looks like to you as an individual. And I hope that it has given you clear, practical actions that you can take today, tomorrow, forever to. Develop your love for yourself, to develop your sense of self love, to help you to practice self love in the way that you might love a friend, a partner, a family member, a pet. But this is more important than all of that because if you don't love yourself, how are you going to really, really love someone else? And this is such a paradox because I think most of us find it easier to love someone else than to love ourselves. But I really think that the root of everything, the root of all love in our lives is loving ourselves. So I hope you found this episode interesting and useful. As always, I would love to hear what you think. You can drop me a line, holly at hollywarton.com or find me online and get in touch there. I would also love for you to join me on Patreon. And this is super linked to today's topic because every week for my $5 $5 and above patrons, I do heart centered energy work. Sometimes it's multiple times a week, but the promise is once a week. So, you, if you sign up at that level or above, you will be getting heart centered energy work done for you at least once a week, as long as you're subscribed. It's an easy way of getting a little bit of extra support with your self love. Because heart centered energy work, as I said, is all about self love self-acceptance, and self-trust. So I would love for you to join me there. If you head to patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Holly Wharton, you can join me there. And as always, thank you so much for listening. Please send me feedback. I would love to know what you think. I think this is a really deep and juicy topic, probably something I'll be writing a book about, but I need to work more with lavender. I need to work more with myself before I can have more stuff to tell you and more ways to help you help yourself. So thank you for listening. Next week's episode will also be a solo episode and I will see you then. So remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 314 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N dot com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Holly Wharton. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.